INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu is briefing the press. The United Nations and head of the UN Office for the West Africa and the Sahel. I also saw Comrade Chris Isibuzo, President of the Nigeria Union of Journalists. But I have also seen my colleagues from different parts of Africa. So permit me to recognize Mr. Saka Lafia, Chairman of the Electoral Commission of Benin Republic. Thank you, Mr. Lafia. Thank you very much. We also have Mr. Aliu Momar Njai, Chairman, Electoral Commission of the Gambia. We have our own sister, Mrs. Jean Mensa, Chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Ghana. And then another sister, Davideta Lansana Brown, Chairperson, Electoral Commission of Liberia. Another sister of ours from Southern Africa, Mrs. Elsie Ngikembua, Chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Namibia. We have Barista Isa Kasuna, Chairman, Electoral Commission of Niger Republic. We have Justice Jacobs Mwambakele, Chairman, Electoral Commission of Tanzania. Um, and then my good friend, Mohamed Kone, Chairman, Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone. And there are other officials of other electoral commissions. So ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to the second briefing of the day. Our intention at this briefing is essentially to give you an update. Some questions were asked in the morning. We said we will provide an update. The first one is the attack in Goza. Goza is in Borno State. And I want to report that the military has confirmed that it was an 18, 81 millimeter mortar attack on two facilities, including a filling station near INEC office, but no damage to INEC facilities and no casualties. Uh, some people were injured and they're in hospital. We wish them a speedy recovery, but no um, destruction of INEC facilities and no disruption of the electoral process. So that is the update on Goza. Unfortunately, we continue to lose some of the bimodal voter accreditation system devices. I reported in the morning the loss of devices in um, Delta and in Safana local government area of Casina State. But unfortunately, we also lost three beavers machines in Ayamelu in Anambra State. But we have recovered from all these losses because we have contingency arrangement to respond to any such attack. There were issues arising from the commencement of the process in Abia, in Imo, and in Kebi, among other places. I'm happy to say that the process is right now ongoing in Abia. The polling units will remain open uh, well beyond the appointed hour until the last person on the queue uh, before 2.30 um, votes. Uh, in Imo, the process is ongoing except a few RAs or PUs marred by in insecurity and thuggery spread across seven local government areas. And the situation in KB State is stable. Voting is going on mainly in Burning KB. 
but earlier it affected Brunin Kebi and a part of Argungu, but mainly in Brunin Kebi, but voting is ongoing. But we have a situation in Bayelsa State, particularly in the capital, Yenagoa, where in four wards, wards four, six, eight, and 14, involving 141 polling units, the process was disrupted. We remobilized security. The situation has come for us to proceed with the process, but the youth corps members um, express um, some apprehension of going back. So we met with the security agencies and we have decided that voting in these 141 polling units, where the materials are actually intact, will take place tomorrow morning. Remember, we are not only doing presidential election, but we are also doing senatorial and federal constituencies. So it's good as much as possible to recover and conduct the election so that we can conclude the processes. So the youth core members who are going to serve as presiding officers and other categories of ad hoc staff are agreeable to um, the election holding in these locations tomorrow. In Lagos, we have been closely following the situation in Okota, Mofoluku, Oshodi, and Elegushi. We have been able to normalize the situation in a number of places, including Ikate, where voting is ongoing. So we'll keep our eyes on the processes in the other areas that I have mentioned. Polling units in a large number of areas closed, and sorting and counting of ballot papers have commenced. Between the last briefing and this one, we have taken a proactive step by meeting with the Inspector General of Police, the National Security Advisor, and the Commandant General of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. The idea is to strengthen security as we move to the next stage of the process which is the collection of results in locations where voting have been concluded at the polling units. I would also like to say that uh, in Edo State, uh, we had a situation that we handled yesterday. One of the parties uh, whose acronym is on the result sheets, but the logo is not on the ballot paper, in a federal constituency, after meeting with the stakeholders, the decision was taken, since the materials are intact, to countermand the election. So we have suspended the election for Essen North, Essen South, and Igweben. The ballot papers will be reprinted. The election will now hold along with the state constituency elections on the 11th of March. That is in the next two weeks. We are determined that no Nigerian should and would be disenfranchised. So we have been responding to some of the situations as they arise, and we are going to do so overnight. There may be no opportunity for us to brief Nigerians again between now and tomorrow, but if need be, we'll make an announcement and do a briefing before we then open the collection center tomorrow. So this is the update on the situation nationally. But as I said, observers, the media, and all others are also keeping their eyes on the processes would like to hear from you what we have seen and what more we need to do. In my earlier briefing, I said that the technology up 
actually optimally performed, generally speaking. We're really happy nationwide. This is the first deployment in a major national election. And the technology has given a good account of itself. Yes, we have lost ballot boxes here and there, but it appears that the target of surgery is now the bimodal voter accreditation system, the PIVAS. But we will continue to protect the process and will continue to proceed courageously to ensure that we conclude this in a very free, fair, and credible manner. We are willing to listen to your comments and take suggestions and um, observations. But as I said, election, we are in the middle of the election. So we'll take a maximum of three interventions because we have to go back to the situation room and to continue to monitor the situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Ainak, please, if you want to ask any question, maybe make your observations or make any comment. Kindly indicate the mic will report to you. Good evening, Chairman. My name is Harry Awurumi Bay. I report for Prompt News online newspapers. Um, mine is, um, you mentioned when you were briefing us that um, beavers, from the information you have gathered across the nation, have performed optimally. But then the bad guys are targeting beavers. And knowing now, and you've met with the chiefs of security. Now, counting has started, and those beavers are going to be brought to racks. And the bad guys, especially in Lagos, and I'm from Imo State, or Kigwe in particular, or Lo or Su, they're going to target the beavers and hijack them. What are you doing about that? Good evening, the chairman. Good evening, colleagues. I am Princess Eupi Ajide of the Anambra Broadcasting Service. Sir, I want to know what will happen to the results that will emanate from Urokwe Primary School and Umwezilibu Hall or Zobolo, where the um, ad hoc workers did not come, but um, Voters volunteered and uh, started the work. So incidentally, in some places, they voted. They did the accreditation and waited for some hours before they started voting. So what will be the outcome of the results from that place? Thank you. Good afternoon, Honorable Chairman. My name is Ogochuko Kurunko, and I report for Radio Nigeria. A colleague of mine that went to vote at a Tunga Maji FCT Health Center polling unit said that um, out of the five polling units, the talks came and made their way ballot boxes belonging to 007 and 0. He now said that the people now mobilized and started beating them before the police came, dispersed the people, and later made they now went out again with the polling uh, poly, uh, ballot boxes and the ad hoc staff. So for people that were supposed to vote at 007 and 014, voting ended for them. So she's now asking, Will there be another opportunity for them to vote, or is that the end of the voting experience for them? Thank you. Thank you. Please Sorry, just, allow just follow up, sir. Honorable just follow up, Chairman sir. to answer those questions, please. 
Okay, Please. sorry, I crave your indulgence. I know that there are many, many people who have many, many good questions to ask and suggestions to make. But we are in the middle of an election. And we have to go back to our situation room. That's why we have limited the interventions to three. I'm sure there will be another opportunity for us to respond and to hear from Nigerians. After all, ours, in our situation room, we have the IEEC, the INEC Citizens Contact Center. And through our social media handles, you can still contact us live and direct, and we will be able to respond to the issues we have raised. And so many Nigerians have been responding drawing our attention to situations which we have in turn also been responding. So I crave your indulgence. I will respond to these three um, quick interventions and then we go back to our situation room. The first one is the security of the beavers. Particularly now that we are going to the next stage Polling units, remember, after the ballot papers have been count, sorted out and counted, and the uh, result sheets duly signed by the presiding officers and the agents of political parties will snap the picture of the result sheet and upload on the IREV portal. So the question is, what happens? This is partly why I said in my opening statement that we met with the security chiefs the Inspector General of Police, the National Security Advisor, and the Commandant General of the Security and Civil Defense. Yes, people are targeting the beavers, but remember also, in our planning for the election, we have made contingency arrangement. In none of these areas where the beavers were targeted was election not held as a result of the absence of the beavers. The highest number came, as I said, from Sapana local government area of Kassina State. And as I said earlier in my first briefing, the police working with the commission have arrested the hoodlums and recovered three out of the six beavers. And the manhunt for the other people is ongoing. So we have taken sufficient measures to make sure that we protect the beavers machines. Remember, we will use the same machines in the next two weeks for the governorship and state assembly elections. So we're not joking with this situation at all. Uh, it's critical to the conduct of credible elections. Princess from the Anambra Broadcasting Service results emanating from a primary school where voters volunteered to conduct the election. I know that the commission appreciates the work of volunteers. That's why we rely on ad hoc staff or temporary staff. But these are staff engaged by the commission, not staff who engage themselves on behalf of the commission as good Samaritans. So I'm not aware of the specific details of this situation you describe in Anambra, but as soon as we go back to the situation room, I will place a call to our resident electoral commissioner in Anambra State. Uh, so we'll find a way of dealing with this situation. Finally, the issue of Tunga Maji, raised by our sister from Radio Nigeria, that thugs made away with some of the election materials before voting could be concluded. So are we now going to resume voting in these locations again? So what we'll do immediately after this meeting is to call our resident electoral commissioner for the federal capital territory and find out exactly what the situation is. Surely, if there are still voters on the queue at Tunga Maji, uh, what I have described earlier will apply to that location as well. Anybody who, had, um, who was on the queue before 2.30 will be allowed to vote even if voting goes well beyond the official closing hours of the polling. So we'll find out um, as soon as we leave uh, this place. So once again, I thank you and I thank Nigerians for their understanding and patience. We are making really very, very steady progress uh, and we'll continue to ensure that nothing, nothing truncates our democracy or truncates the will of the Nigerian people.
Our allegiance is to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and our commitment is to the Nigerian people. I thank you very much. But before we close, um, in case uh, we, there is need to issue another statement again, we will at short notice inform the media uh, because they are here. But as a matter of course, I would like to invite you at midday tomorrow for the official opening of the National Population Center for the 2023 general elections. We hope um, later tomorrow we should, we expect to have some of the results of the election coming from the states, particularly for the presidential election. So the situation, the coalition center for the presidential election will be opened at midday tomorrow, Sunday, the 26th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, INEC Chairman Mahmoud uh, Yakubu there uh, giving us uh, some narratives on how the elections have gone so far. Uh, talks about uh, tax on INEC facility in Goza, loss of Bevers in places like Delta, some parts of Katsina, Anambra. And uh, he says there are some contingency on the loss of those items. Uh, he also talks about issues in election commencement in Kebi, Imo and of course in Abia, and of course uh, some skirmishes in Lagos, Okota, Mafuluku, Legushi, and of course some parts of Oshodi. So North talks about contingent, contingent arrangement and that the election is uh, on a very steady process using his exact words. And we have uh, Libero still with us. Yeah. How does that instill confidence uh, on the electorate so far? Yes, uh, problems uh, here and there, but uh, we're still where we are. Yeah, um, I, I think briefings like these are good um, to at least, you know, bring people up to speed of what is happening. And also to show that INEG is aware of most of these happenings. But that's also, you know, had not um, answered quite a lot of questions. It raised more questions. Uh, questions and answer. You know, INEC is aware of the situation happening in Mafuluku, Oshodi, you know, Isolo, uh, the, as he said, the Elegushi area that uh, yes. Cam Normalcy had returned and voting had um, uh, commenced, but I don't know how true that statement is. Um, so, why this area? So, I will, I will crave the dodges of INEC, really, with what had happened is need for them to appraise the number of registered voters in this area and possibly give them an opportunity at a shot at the ballot again because these people might likely be disenfranchised for no fault of theirs. Mm. Not because they were not ready to come vote and um, because, you know, of, you know, skirmishes here and there, despite the briefing of um, the security agencies. Mm -hmm. But you find, that, like... Even while we're here, you're receiving a complaint from uh, Ojuelegba, Cold Street, and, and, and Co. that uh, security attention is uh, uh, required in those areas as, you know, there are thugs attacking voters. So, in these areas, we shouldn't allow the thugs, the beaver snatchers, to have their way always. There's need for INEC at the end of the process today to appraise all of the areas where you have challenges and if it is, you know, much, there's need for them to visit, you know, the provisions of the Act, like I, we have identified, and give opportunity to these places to, you know, re redo the process. That will also go a long way in imposing confidence in the people. That yes, INEC had their cries. And so INEC had given them opportunity, you know, to do it again. But if you just hear their cry and then you're looking through the process and at the end of the day, nothing is done. You know, you just foreclose the issue like that without giving them a foreclosure. It's kind of um, also discourages people, uh, you know, to have faith in the process. And also, you know, you you'd, you just lost hope completely that, look, why can't we just do one thing right mm -hmm. for, for once? I, I think I next should look at all of those, mm -hmm. you know, in, um, in, in appraising, you know, the entire process at the end of the day. And then there was something instructive that he said. I really didn't quite get it. 
um, the Igwebe um, in Edo State, where elections have been countermanded, mm -hmm. and that um, I don't know whether it's a presidential election or the um, parliamentary election in Dosira, because he said the election will take place, now take place on the 11th, on the 11th we'll alongside the other one. So if it is the presidential election in those areas, that means we have a long time waiting mm. for the presidential election result. But if it is the parliamentary election, then we should expect presidential election result, you know, to come in as soon as possible. All right. So you also mentioned that elections will take place tomorrow in Biosa State. It's some of those places that elections did not take place today. But let's bring in Jack as um, the political think tank talking about CDD. Uh, impressing on INEC to extend this voting period. Why is the CDD insisting and impressing on INEC to extend this voting period? Talk to us. Impressing on INEC to extend this voting period. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, as that was contained in a, 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 a preliminary press briefing uh, that uh, INEC should ensure that uh, every uh, citizen that is out there to vote, uh, that is on the queue before 2.30 should be allowed to vote, uh, no matter how long that takes. So uh, citizens are definitely uh, going to be uh, they are, they are ensure that they, are, they, they exercise their, their franchise. Uh, so just like the ANEC uh, chairman said, uh, that in those places where elections are moved to uh, tomorrow, like in Bayosa, for instance, uh, citizens are going, to, are going to vote. And uh, we also stated that categorically in our press brief that that, that provision should also be adhered to. Yeah, but uh, okay, that's that. That's that. All right, Jack, we'll come back to you. But we have uh, Benjamin Warrior uh, from Iboy State uh, reporting from us, uh, for us there, rather. Uh, Benjamin, what can you tell us about the situation where you are? Yeah, the area is very calm. Election uh, across the place is uh, peaceful, credible. You know, whether uh, the INEC official started distributing the materials as early as 7 o'clock this morning. And um, of course, the voters' turnout is quite excessive. Okay, Benjamin, uh, what can you tell us about the uh, security scenario where you are? Were there any skirmishes and was there enough uh, uh, personnel on ground to make sure things go smooth? Absolutely, yeah, 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 there is high security. Even as we are coming back from monitoring, it was a talk of war. The security men, you know, we are very... The experience everywhere was calm and peaceful. It was only in one local government that you could, you could implement that we had that uh, some people uh, were kidnapped. Uh, but uh, we also learned that uh, security people uh did the action and uh, the victims were all rescued. So, so far, so good. Uh, the atmosphere is very calm. Security people. Uh, we are on the approach to ensure that uh, everywhere is possible. All right, Benjamin, we want to say thank you very much for your time. Um, let's come in straight to the studio here. Well, uh, let's still look at this. Um, Professor Mahmoud actually spoke, yeah. and he highlighted the fact that, like our reporters have actually mentioned, Okota, mm -hmm. Mafuluku, Oshudi. Mm -hmm. And that was, although he noted Ikate, mm -hmm. that in Ikate, voting has begun. Yes. I did get some feedback too that in Elegushi Kate voting has started and they're clamoring for people to come back and exercise their rights to vote. And I'm happy he mentioned that because we do deserve free and fair elections. That's a phrase we've been throwing around for so many years, free and fair, free and fair. But if it's not ensured that every citizen gets the right to vote, then it's not, free. It's not fair in any way, shape or form. We have citizens who came from the diaspora who flew down, left their jobs, their families, just to come and say, I want greater Nigeria. We want a progressive nation. And you mean that we would allow thugs to dismantle the entire process and then say we have some substantial decision to make and say that, oh, this election will be nullified. It's not possible. We have to ensure that across the nation, we do our very best to ensure that citizens who want to vote 
citizens who took the time out to go and get their PVCs, citizens who took the time out to pick up their PVCs, exercise their right today to vote for their candidate, the candidate that they believe is best to take us forward as a country. All right. Thank you, Toyra. And uh, Opa Deoye, our correspondent, is at Opalindi uh, area of Lagos to give us uh, more insight on situation there. Opa, uh, over to you. What do you make of scenario over there? Yes, um, counting of ballot continues in several polling units around town. Just coming from Surulere some moments back, and uh, at the various polling units that were visited, they have already completed the counting of ballots with the result transmitted already. But here in Obalinde, you can see this unit as a very, it's a very populous uh, uh, unit with so many voters, and that is why you see our um, counting of ballots still going on here, and people are still, you know, they are counting the ballots with the electoral officer here. You can see some of them using their electronic devices to record the proceedings, while many are just, you know, following them by counting. Okay, you can see what is happening on the camera there. So, a moment ago, I was at Srulere, where I, um, you know, I visited a polling unit at, at the Fal Falfolu Junction in Srulere, and the report we got there uh, that took us there was that um, some talks came in a minibus to create commotion at that polling unit, and we saw two empty um, shelves of bullets at that polling unit because a stampede was created and people ran away. And at the end of the day, we were told that the talks, you know, went away with the ballot box of the presidential election, leaving behind the ballot boxes of the senatorial election and the House of Rep election. So as it is right now, many people were, were injured in that polling unit and were told that they are nursing their injuries in their respective homes as we speak at the moment. All right, okay, Abba, you've mentioned this as it stands right now. Um, a lot of people, what's the security presence in Obalende? Because usually um, it's one of those flashpoints a lot of people were expecting things to unravel in. What is the security situation there? Yes, the, 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 the security men are at a lot. You can see um, them. I don't know if the camera can see them. You can see their truck, their at a lot, are watching the proceedings of um, the election here. Yeah, they are just uh, some meters away from the point where the ballot is being counted. Everything is in order in Obalinde. We have not heard of any clash or any violence whatsoever across Obalinde. I agree with you that Obalinde is one of the flashpoints when, you know, elections take place. But today, I have not heard or I have not seen anywhere where there is any clash or any violence in Obalinde right now. I want to give kudos to the military men, the police officers, and other uniformed men on duty. They have comported themselves so very professionally in this election. And um, in many places that I visited, they are practically on holiday because there was nothing really to tend to except perhaps in Ikate, Elegushi, which I, I visited some hours back at the very at, a, at one of the polling units in that area, we were told that some thugs also invaded them, you know, destroying election materials, ballot papers, tables, the cubicles, and what have you. There we saw a detachment of military men with an armored tank. We also saw several policemen and other police officers in that place, but they were able to restore peace and orderliness in that environment before we left the place. So practically on the overall, um, uh, policemen and other uniformed men in places that I visited have been on holiday, so to say. Very good, uh, Oba. Now, you know, in densely populated areas such as uh, the scenario behind you, how would you say the logistics uh, is like? Is it enough? in terms of the Beavers machine and, of course, uh, other materials as well, and uh, in other places you've been to? I think there's, there's an issue with INEC logistics in this election in some of the places that we went to. In Lekki, for an instance, where the popular musician turned politician voted, that's Banky W. 
election did not start there until around 19 minutes past 12. You know, the election was supposed to start at 8.30, but it never started in that place until around 19 minutes past 12. That's, we have about uh, three to four polling units on that spot. So, if you look at that, it's, it's, it's like a, it's, it's a minus for INEC in terms of logistics provision for the election. We have not had too much of the beavers failing in this election, but um, um, we, have had of, we have had cases of uh, you know, elections starting quite behind schedule. We also got to a place in Victoria Island as at uh, maybe 11.30, between 11.30 and 12. The election materials had not arrived that particular polling unit. So beyond the lateness of election materials getting to polling units, the beavers machines and other things uh, you know, worked very well in places that I saw, that I visited. All right, many thanks to you, Oba Dewey, a rice correspondent, for bringing us elected from Oba Lende. Now, moving on to Oyo State, where the governor, Sheyi Makinde, has cast his vote at his ward, Ward 11, Unit 1 polling unit along the Iwo Road axis of Ibadan. State capital. Now, in the chat with the Rise News, Governor Mackinde describes the election as seamless while hoping that the will of voters would prevail. Arise correspondent Olutai of Famous School has more. The late arrival of INEC election materials and personnel in parts of Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, did not stop prospective voters from exercising their rights as they patiently waited to vote. Security agents also mounted strategic points in a bid to forestall any breakdown of law and order and so as to increase confidence in voters. Let us all obey the law. The rules are there, let's follow it. And we all have reason to say, thank God for your state, remain peaceful. Oyo State Governor Sheyima Kinde arrived at Ward 11, Unit 1 Poly Unit, where he met many persons yet to vote as at 10 a.m., but called for patience. After eventually voted, the governor described the voting as seamless while hoping that it will reflect the true yearnings of Nigerians. They should be patient. The process is uh, ongoing, it's seamless, and uh, uh, they should exercise their civic responsibility. In other parts of town, residents trooped out en masse to cast their ballot, while others took to the streets to play football, saying that despite the initial itches experienced at the commencement of the voting, the biometric verification and accreditation system, Beavers, was largely effective. Um, I think uh, so far uh, it looks um, quite uh, peaceful and everything is progressing well. From where I've been to and where I casted my votes, uh, it's obvious that um, I neck were there on time and most people actually casted their votes quite early. The only reason that I see is that maybe the current situation of our country, I mean, the, uh, and, and the castless policy that caused everything, that is first. Secondly, the INEC official, they did not come, they did not come early today. So I think they just arrived uh, now, maybe 30 minutes past. INEC official, they are late before they come this morning. If we are outside before they come, because I've been outside since 7 o'clock. So, and I will still have, go there to go and take my number. So, before anything, I'll go back to work. The expectations from this cross-section of Nigerians is that the winner of the presidential election would help to deliver more dividends of democracy when he is announced by INEC. Olutai of Moscow, Arise News, Ibadan. Arriba State Governor Yusuf Wike has voted in today's presidential election, finally, after he complained about the functionality of the Bivas uh, in his polling unit. Governor Wike has come out with his wife, Suzette uh, Eberechi, at polling unit 7, Ward 9 in uh, Rumwe, Precom in Opia, uh, Apo, local government area, but could not vote because the Beavers machine failed to accredit their PVC. After over two hours of waiting, a new set of devices were employed and the governor was successfully screened to vote. However, his wife could not vote uh, for the second time as the machine again failed to accredit her. You can imagine the large crowd, meaning that so many people will be disenfranchised and that could lead to a lot of crisis. I can even still believe that 
of all the promises made after I've left my wife for more than two hours, yet the beavers is still not very uh, functional. I don't want to begin to suspect any foul play, but from the reports I've received from other local governments, it does appear to be the same uh, experience. And then you would now wonder why should it be peculiar to reverse it. Uh, I don't want to make any suspicion yet, but I don't think it's quite encouraging. Yeah, my people cannot be disenfranchised. You can see we've never had an election where you have this number of crowd. I believe that they will extend the period to 6 p.m. I mean, look at the time now. Uh, voting auto has started from 8.30 to about uh, 2.30. Uh, uh, but we are just starting. So I'm not happy with the uh, preparedness of Henek as regards to the beavers. Still making the rounds, let's cross over to Kano State where Benga Ashiru joins us. Benga? All right, Benga, let's actually get um, the latest. Uh, the last time we actually spoke to you, um, processes were slow. How, how far has it gone right now? Okay. Now, um, back to that region, uh, if I may, uh, uh, Liberos, uh, Governor uh, El Rufai mentioned the word inconsequential when it comes to ballot snatching. And my question is, isn't this denying the voters their rights, you know, when you take away that ballot? And of course, uh, it still boils down to the same thing that, uh, you know. Oh, okay. We still have. Uh, uh, we'll take that uh, question later. Uh, Benga Ashiru is back online. Benga, what more can you tell us? Uh, what's the latest update where you are? Thank you, Aaron and me. Uh, we are live at Gamma B Ward in Kano, uh, the ancient city of Kano. And interestingly, uh, this ward has uh, a very unpleasant antecedent. It's known as the origin of the inconclusive center in Kano. So you can see the massive deployment of security forces from different security agencies here to ensure that everything is orderly. And live here with us, we have the commissioner of police for Kano State, uh, uh, CP Mohammed Yakubu, live with us. Uh, uh, welcome to Arise News. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, how would you rate the security deployments in terms of um, orderliness of the uh, conduct of this uh, election and in, in terms of the, its peaceful conduct? Uh, the, uh, the the uh, deployment we have is is very good. We have a good number of men drawn from uh, not only the police but other security services. They are, uh, they, are, they are all here doing their work de diligently. Yeah, but uh, we visited some of these poli uh, polling centers uh, at Kwa Kwan Su, uh, polling center at Madubi local government uh, in uh, the, the stronghold of the, the hometown of uh, Senator Rabbi Musa Kwakwanso, and we saw uh, the crowd control there, uh, which was uh, quite awful in, in terms of uh, organization. And um, the security presence was uh, was little until we cried out, and until we, before we saw the arrival of uh, security forces there. Uh, could you explain what actually? Yes, the point you were, you were quite outside. The policemen were we are doing their uh, duty inside. They were uh, pro protecting the uh, the mat materials for the election. They they couldn't have left them to just be going about outside. In fact, that team was led by an SPO. They were there uh, about. Uh, 14 of them were there with one SPO. So police presence was uh, was uh, good there and they were doing the uh, duty we sent them to do. Yeah, we saw uh, the massive presence of minors, children obviously from their look uh, indiscriminately 
unchecked at various polling centers. Uh, couldn't this have been better organized to prevent minors from penetrating, the, uh, from being part of this voting exercise? Uh, the, is, it is very difficult to uh, determine by, by, by mere appearance who is, who is a minor or not. Uh, most of the ones you are seeing, maybe they are genetic, they, they are, their growth rate might be uh, impaired. So, uh, I don't know, all those that you see voting, they, they are those that have been approved by ANEC, and I cannot change it. Okay, thank you, CP Mohamed Yakubu, the Commissioner of Police for Kano State. We wish you and the rest uh, security agents the best of luck as you ensure a peaceful conduct of this exercise. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right. Uh, All right. Back okay. to you. Go ahead. Okay, Benga Shiro, thank you very much. Okay, back to you in the studio here. Of course, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu actually spoke, and we'll also be getting Jack's opinion about this. He mentioned some major, major talking points, one of them being that um, elections have been postponed in Bios, in four wards, 141 polling units in Bios State till tomorrow, 26th. So, and of course, he also mentioned we'll be getting reports about that in Essen North, Essen South, and in Gueben, where it says elections have been postponed till the 11th of March. More clarity will be given. But first of all, let's start here in the studio. We, yeah, we spoke I, about this. I, the one for Essen North, out and Igwebe um, will not hold tomorrow because, according to the INEC chairman, ballot materials had been destroyed and, in some cases, snatched. And so they will have to print another ballot papers in those places. Were well, they destroyed all that? No, political political parties' logo yeah. were not on the ballot, Ballots, and yeah. so there's need to reprint the ballot so that will give everybody. Um, opportunity to be part of the process. Otherwise, that would be, you know, giving room for cancellation of that election. What does this because mean for, the electoral, for the electoral process? So there's needs. If, if, if it is the presidential, then that means we have to wait a long time for a result to come. Because if it is the presidential election in those areas that is postponed till on the 11th, that means you need to conduct elections in those areas for you to add the number of votes from those areas to the number that had be, that voted before you determine the actual um, uh, outcome of the election. Very good. But if it is just the parliamentary, right. then the presidential election result would have been announced, and then the parliamentary election would hold uh, simultaneously with the state parliamentary election, the governorship election in that area. But I need to get clarity, like I said before, I need to get clarity on that. But for the BIESA um, that is holding tomorrow, that means all uh, materials are available, yeah. but are for logistic reasons election could not hold in this polling unit. And so that's why they would, by, uh, uh, um, according mm. to in compliance mm. with the provisions of oh. Section 47.3, yeah. there's need to hold the election within 24 hours, mm. you know, All which right, is, uh, you know, tomorrow. Liber is very good. Uh, would like to hold your thought on that. We have Ozi Okoli in Ojota, mm -hmm. Okota rather, uh, area of Lagos. Uh, Ozi, you're in Okota now. What more can you tell us? We are presently at the polling unit of 070. This particular polling unit is experiencing uh, a challenge, and that challenge has to do with uploading the results that have been uh, already uh, acknowledged by the INEC officials here. And if you look around, you see a huge number of people who have vowed that they will not leave this place until the results are uploaded. Luckily, the INEC uh, officials uh, were able to upload the results of the House of uh, uh, Senate and then representatives, that's the National Assembly results. But the results for the presidential candidates yet to be uploaded and they have vowed that they will not leave this particular place until it is done. I have some other, uh, one or two persons here who would like to talk to us concerning the situation here, especially how it all started. So tell us your name. Okay, um, my name is um, Adako. 
Okorum, uh, one of the registered um, voters for this polling unit, which is 070 Otubajua Kame Stroke SMABO Drive Junction. We started right on time. Um, our NEC official showed up. I was the first person to cast my vote. And before two, we were all done. And of course, to keep in um, terms with INEC's um, guidelines, we waited to 2.30 for the results to be counted and then for us to verify that it was okay. And since then, we've been waiting for the upload of um, the results. Well, we waited a bit, and there were some agitations here and there. People were very upset, angry over the whole situation. And after we had intervened and people had tried to achieve some calm, they were able to upload the National Assembly results. But unfortunately, it's still quite um, surprising, and we're still asking questions why that should go through, and the presidential results are yet to be uploaded because those who have got their votes here have vowed that the officials will not leave this polling unit until the results are uploaded to the site which is the requirement because and that is what it should be so and we're wondering why of all the results the presidential elections the results are not being uploaded so we are asking questions please what is going on you understand and we are waiting we are here we mean business we are going nowhere and for the sake of these INEC officials who we are feeling for we need these sites to come up, to open and allow them to upload these results so we can return back to our homes. We mean for a peaceful and fair election. That's what we stand for. Thank you. So, so, so um, you can see the cheering and the jeering based on the fact that uh, they really meant business staying here to ensure that the results are uploaded. It is no longer the case of um, accreditation or INEC officials, beavers, um, malfunctioning or whatever. The problem here now is the uploading of results to INEC server. Thank you much, Ozi Okoli, for um, the job you've actually done. And coming to you, Jack in Abuja. Jack, of course, we've just heard from Ozi speaking in Okota, one of the places that Professor Mahmoud actually mentioned as having security challenges. Of course, he mentioned Mafuluku, Oshudi, and Legushi. I want to get your overview because he mentioned quite a lot of states and the security challenges they are encountering. And more importantly, that hoodlums and um, detractors certainly have been targeting these beavers machines. Although Aerofi says that it's to no avail, but talk to us about these developments we're seeing actually play out. Yeah, so uh, our sense around uh, the insecurity challenges we face across uh, the country is, is this. Uh, so uh, in as much as uh, we, we know the BVAS is a, is a game changer, and uh, uh, this election cycle, uh, we've seen uh, uh, the zeal for Nigerians to, uh, to, to register to get the PVCs and also to, to come out and vote. Uh, from our observation, uh, the, uh, the, the amount of uh, citizens coming out to turning up to vote, it's, it's becoming in, it's impressive uh, so far. And uh, we have to look at the, at the political economy of, of the entire uh, election uh, security and economic uh, in, environment. So uh, we, before the elections, we've already... Uh, uh, we've, we've, we've thought of this uh, with the economic uh, hardships with regards to scarcity of, of the Naira and also scarcity of fuel. Uh, analysts uh, have seen that it's a way to uh, suppress vote buying. Uh, so uh, we already, we've anticipated uh, that uh, skirmishes and violence in this uh, nature may likely come up to uh, disrupt the, the, the elections. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, one of the key uh, indicators we use for our analysis is its identity. And uh, Nigerian politics historically has been the issue of identity, right? Uh, and, and the current election, uh, it's, it's, it's really heightened with regards to the identity uh, uh, situation. Uh, so we are... Uh, voters have to uh, weigh between. Um, Jackson, I want to say thank you for your time. Ethnic.
um, as Nigeria still decides we'll be stretching our tentacles to Edo State, where Adibe Emeyonu, a reporter with our sister publication, This Day Newspaper, is there in Edo State to give us clarifications. Adibe, talk to Ross. Um, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu spoke about Edo State, Essa North, Essa South, and Igweben. What's the latest? Well, the latest is that uh, the INEC has uh, uh, stopped the election in uh, that data constituency because of uh, the missing logo of Labour Party. First, when the youth, the voters, uh, discovered that they protested that uh, without the Labour Party logo, there will be no election and uh, the wreck you know, yielded to that. Uh, uh, request and postponed the election, but every other election, the Senate and the presidency, presidential election held in that uh, very federal constituency. Uh, permit me, uh, um, Adibe, just for clarity's sake, um, yes. is it, so are we talking about the presidential elections, uh, the Senate and House of Rep elections that has been postponed till the 11th of March? Or what's the situation? No, is the federal constituency that is the House of Representatives election okay. in that uh, All right. Yes. Yeah, got yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Adipe Emmanuel of Federal uh, Correspondent in Federal State. Many thanks, uh, Torira. I asked uh, liberals this earlier. I still have to go back mm -hmm. to. Uh, a revised uh, statement regarding inconsequential nature of uh, ballot snatching and, um, you know, aren't you still denying the, the voter uh, that right to vote at that point in time? I mean, I think I just received a message saying if majority of citizens vote, mm. if there are a few skirmishes in Lagos here and there, that it doesn't affect the... You know, entire turnout of the election, election should still proceed, of course. But as much as possible, in everything we do in life, in Nigeria, in your polling unit, in your ward, you want to do it to the very best of your ability. And that's just basically our expectation from my neck. We always want the very best. I mean, we watched earlier a um, police officer or <laughs> a security officer said, um, we cannot detect if those children are underaged or not. We have identification cards. We have varying means of being able to check. But I think to almost every visible adult, we can see that certain ages are beyond, uh, lower than 18 years old. Okay, uh, let us pick it up from that particular point because you've been amused uh, about uh, the the eligibility of those that actually showed up, the police officer said he cannot detect with the naked eye the ages. They might be having deformities, he I says. I am shocked if he has said otherwise, because uh, if you remember, in 2015, 2019, there were allegations of underage voting, underage registration, you know, from that part of the country. And uh, the allegation, the answer, the response was that well, some of them, even from um, the INEC pulling uh, uh, unit um, staff, is the fact that oh, when you raise these issues, your parents will come and say, yes, they are 18. How do you say he's not 18? You know, so it's, um, and there's been this consistent complaint about underage voting. And we seem to accommodate it. And, you know, it's also, when you're reporting from that end of the country, you also have to be very careful so as not to, you know, cross the borderline because um, little things can trigger unrest in those places. So especially when you have such number of crowd, in some cases, you know, largely uneducated. And so you want to also maintain a, a certain position. There's still, these are some of the issues that Sanusi Lamido complained against yes, that less led to his ouster from the throne. And then I'm bringing me to Erufai. Erufai has said this ballot, uh, these beavers that were stolen are inconsequential because um, at the end of the day, they'll be useless in your, in your hands, whether you snatch them or not. But I agree with you that if those machines are the machines that are specifically designed for those polling units, you would have deprived 
those voters of the opportunity for accreditation. But with what had happened in the case of Wiki's polling unit, we see now that you can have a backup. So if those machines are stolen and there is a backup, then it becomes uh, just useless in the hands of those that have stolen it. Very good. Oshoma, Ola Torira, Majeku Dumi, Oniru. Uh, I'd like to thank you all uh, for joining us on this special coverage of the elections. And of course, uh, the viewers and our reporters out there doing justice uh, to our Arise News coverage.